This week, we are reviewing the most famous white wine varietal from Germany. And in the tip of the week, we're gonna talk about just what some of those weird terms mean on German wine labels. All of that, coming up next. Hello and welcome to Wine This Week with Scott Leak. We're gonna be talking about Riesling this week, a grape that originated in Germany and can be found in a number of other places in that area of Europe. It is now also available in the US. You can find it in Washington State, California. But interestingly, in New York, the Finger Lakes are really well known for their Rieslings. You can also find this in Australia. Both the Eden and Clare Valleys make great Rieslings as well, tend to be more on the dry side. I've got a couple behind me here. So interestingly, I found one from the Czech Republic, which I've never had one from there before. So I'm interested in to try that. This one here is a German one and I had to have a German one for uh, the broadcast today. But the other one there is a Grand Cru from Alsace and that is another spectacular region for making Rieslings. Uh, there's a number of grapes that grow there. Riesling is one of the big ones and it is a very different style than some of the German wines. Germans come in a wide range but the ones in Alsace tend to be really dry. And so I wanna dispel a few myths and get a few facts out there about Riesling. It's a grape I've been enjoying for years, but I've really enjoyed the opportunity this week to read up on it, learn more about it, and uh, just increase my overall knowledge of Rieslings because they've had some bad raps over the years. In the 70s and 80s, there were a lot of really cheap, crappy Rieslings that made their way to the US for you know five bucks a bottle and they were, low alcohol, super high sugar. They were not all that well made. The funny thing is though, Rieslings are among some of the most expensive and age worthy wines that you can get among white wine varietals. Uh, you talk to a lot of wine collectors and, and sommeliers and they will tell you Riesling can become incredibly complex. They can age as well as some great Bordeaux. They can reach hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in value as well, and really can, can evolve over time. So they can become much more complex and interesting wines than they're given credit for. Yes, you can still to this day get cheap crappy ones, but for the most part, if you know what you're looking for, and I'll elaborate a little bit more on that in the tip of the week, you can find yourself some really good Rieslings that suit your palate. Now they do come in a wide variety from very sweet and low alcohol to very dry and higher alcohol. I have seen Rieslings when I was shopping for these that were around five, six percent. Those are going to be very high in sugar content because the alcohol did not get high enough. It didn't eat, the yeast didn't eat enough of those sugars. So the alcohol is going to be on the low side. The sugar is going to be on the high side. And the reason they do that is because Riesling is one of the highest acidity grapes out there as well. So if you think about, I talked about this in my champagne video, why champagnes used to be really sweet and why the brute scale is what it is. Think of this like lemonade. You know, you have very, very high acidity in lemon juice. You add some sugar to it and it provides this great balance. The acid didn't go anywhere. You didn't, you didn't get rid of it. You just kind of balanced it. You neutralized it in a sense with adding sugar. And that's what they're often trying to do with Riesling by stopping the fermentation before the sugars have been eaten away, keeping that alcohol a little bit lower. So that's a good clue for you when you're out shopping for a Riesling. Look at the alcohol percentage on the back. If it's below 9%, chances are you're dealing with a pretty sweet Riesling. If it's 9%, 10, 11, you're probably dealing with a dry or at least an off dry Riesling. The one we're gonna have today, this is an 11%. The two behind me are uh, 12 and 13 and a half in the one in Alsace. So those are going to be very, very dry wines. But today we're just gonna have the one from Germany and I'm excited to see what it has to offer. This week's wine is from Hexhammer. This is a small producer in Germany. This is their 2019 Riesling Corset, which has a lot of Corsite in the soil there. So I'm expecting to get some minerality out of this. This is a 11% uh, alcohol. So this should be on the fairly dry side. And I've said this many times before on this channel, if you've seen it before, you know, don't fear the screw cap, nothing wrong with the screw cap wine. Rieslings are good, really, really cold you're not gonna lose any of the flavor. These are very fruit forward and intensely aromatic wines. They're not gonna be suppressed too badly by having it too cold. So go ahead and get this one nice and chilled. I'm drinking this at cellar temperature though, because I do wanna make sure I get all the components out of the aromas and flavors. So already I can see this is 
pretty deep golden in uh, in color. You know, a lot of whites can be a little bit more on the pale side. I wouldn't call this pale at all. And again, Rieslings can vary tremendously. You can get a very pale Riesling. You can get ones that are kind of golden like this. And the more they age, the more golden in color, the more yellow they're gonna get. Sometimes you might have a little green tinge on it, but this one's a beautiful golden color. Let's give it a smell. <laughs> so intense. So there's some lime, there's some green apple, there's some tropical fruits in here as well. I'm getting some nice apricot, which I love, and maybe even a little pineapple. There's some honey. There's something floral, and I can't quite put my finger on what floral note I'm getting, but there's something a little floral. But my favorite thing that's coming through, and this is very quintessential among Rieslings, there's a compound, a chemical compound found in the skins of the Riesling grape that give off an aroma sometimes, not always, but sometimes they give off this aroma that's described as petrol. So if you really geek out when you go and you fill up your car at the gas pump and you love that smell of gasoline, it's not quite that same smell, but if you like that smell, you need to give yourself, uh, get yourself a good Riesling because it's certainly there in this case. And it tends to get even more pronounced as Riesling's age. So let's give this a taste. Actually, the apricot is the first thing that comes through. But first things first. So 11%, it's not super sweet, but this thing is not bone dry either. I'm going to call this medium on the sweetness scale. Again, that acidity is very, very high here. This is really high acidity. It needs some sweetness to balance it out. So I'm going to call this kind of medium on the dry to sweet scale but it's not off-putting, it's not sugary, it's just providing great balance. It, I mentioned lemonade earlier, it reminds me of that great balance you can have with a good lemonade. You can have lemonades that are too sweet, but this is really well balanced, nicely done on the alcohol sugar level. And again, keep in mind, when you're shopping for Rieslings or a lot of wines in general, there's an inverse relationship. The lower the alcohol, generally speaking, the higher the sugar is gonna be because alcohol is a result of the sugars being eaten by the yeast. So. Remember that inverse relationship. So again, medium level on the sweetness here, very high level on the acidity. I'm not really getting much heat on the alcohol. This is probably, again, 11%. I'll call this medium low on the alcohol. The body on this is awesome. I was actually expecting this to feel, feel a little lighter in weight. Again, reasonings can vary greatly in their body also. This has got a nice medium plus body to it. There was some heft, it felt heavy in my mouth and I really enjoyed it. It, it was very, uh, there was this nice coating feeling. And like I said, that apricot was the one of the first things I tasted. That is really good. Apricot, the pineapple, there's certainly some lime. I'd say there's probably some green apple that I smelled that I'm picking up in the, the flavor as well. This is a really nice wine. I'm enjoying this a lot. Um, timing works out well that I'm having this because I'm, I'm having something tonight that I'm really going to enjoy with this. Rieslings, I think I've said this if you've watched my prior shows as well. Wines that tend to have a little bit more actual sweetness or perceived sweetness tend to be very good with spicy foods. Think of that sweet and spicy combo, and, and that's that's what you're gonna achieve here. And particularly when you get a Riesling really cold, I know there's a lot of you know wine dorks out there that love Riesling with buffalo wings. So again, that, that heat, that spice, when you get it really cold, it's a very similar sensation when you got a really cold beer to help wash it down. But again, that sugar level is gonna help cut through some of that spiciness and, and provide you a little bit of relief from it. Uh, the acidity will too. It, it'll help neutralize some of that spice. So great, great option when you're having spicy foods. Getting back to this, um, kind of did that a little out of order, but I don't think you're going to critique me for it. The finish on this is really good too. I'm still getting a little finish. Uh, there's almost like this honeyed component uh, that, again, I mentioned kind of that mouth coating feeling. And so I'm picking up on some of that. I would call this a little honeyed as well, but 
but very fruit forward. This is this is just a really fun wine. This was twenty dollars and uh, certainly worth it. This is this is a good good quality wine. So balance is great. I mentioned that the you've got good fruit, you've got good acidity, you got the right level of sweetness to balance it all out. High high points on this for balance. Pretty good length on the finish, as I mentioned. So good points on that. There's some nice complexity. I get that petrol in the flavor profile as well. There's some people that'll argue it's a primary flavor. And again, because it intensifies with aging, some people would say maybe it's a tertiary flavor, but there are some primary and tertiary components here. There are a lot of different fruit flavors. Like I mentioned, there's the floral, just the intensity of these flavors and aromas is really good. I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I'm scoring this eight points. This is this is a great wine. Again, you, you need to like or be able to appreciate a little bit of sweetness. This is well balanced, so don't be afraid of having a Riesling if you think to yourself, I only like dry wines. If you really like sweet wines, this would be a good one to maybe move a little bit towards dry wines, but it still has the sweetness that you appreciate. But again, you can find Rieslings with much lower alcohol content and higher levels of sweetness if you wanna go that route as well. So. Highly recommend this one. I think this is this is doing really well. This is a 2019. I'd love to try this again a little bit later when it's aged a little bit more and see how it's evolved. But so far, this definitely gets my endorsement. As I mentioned before, Rieslings can be incredibly versatile. They can come in a lot of different styles. If you're looking for a dry Riesling, again, the best places to look for are gonna be Alsace in, also in Australia, you're gonna look for ones from the Finger Lakes, New York. Washington State ones are likely going to say dry Riesling on the bottle if you want a dry Riesling. But if you want a sweeter Riesling, Germany's probably gonna be your best bet. And again, the German ones can be very versatile as well as was the one that we had here. Much, not very sweet on, on this one. So a couple of the regions that you'll find on a German label are gonna be Mosul, Faltz, and Rheingau. Mosul is the one that is the farther north, farthest north. So it is gonna have a harder time ripening. So the sugar levels are going to be a little bit um, lower on those. So they're gonna stop fermentation a little bit sooner to make sure that what sugar is there helps balance out that acidity. So if you see Mosul as a village or as a region on your bottle, know that that's probably gonna be a little bit more on the sweet side. There is actually a classification system of ripeness of the grapes in Germany, the Prodicat system. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but there it is. That measures, again, the ripeness level. So there's six different terms that they use, the first one being cabinet. And cabinet is the most basic. It is, you know, the grapes are harvested at their normal time, so they're gonna have normal levels of sugar in them probably gonna be a little bit on the drier side, they're still gonna have some sweetness. The next one after that is Spatleza, and that one is gonna have about seven more days on the vine. So the grapes are gonna get a little more ripe, they're gonna have more sugar, it's gonna be a little sweeter. After that, you might see the word Auschleza. That one's even more time on the vine, higher sugar levels. There's a couple other ones that are starting to get into kind of the dessert wine category, and those are gonna be uh, Baranauschleza, Trocken Baranauschleza, and ice wine, those are not too important for kind of understanding table wines. Those are gonna be harder to find and, and a lot more expensive too. But those first three are gonna be ones to look for. Again, they're gonna measure the ripeness level. Cabinet's gonna be the least sweet of those. The other words you might find are gonna be Trocken. Trocken is the German word for dry. Some of them starting to market more to English speaking countries are using the word select on the bottle instead of trocken. That indicates that it could be dry. You might also find the word halb trocken. Halb means half, so half dry. So it's gonna be a little sweeter. English word for that, you might find the word classic on it. So that could indicate that it's a half dry. You might find medium sweetness on those. So those are some terms you might find on German labels that are gonna help you identify what's maybe the right bottle of Riesling that you wanna get for your palate. Again, I'd recommend trying a variety of them and see that maybe a little bit more sweetness works quite well. These, generally speaking, are high quality wines that we're finding in the US these days. So give a Riesling a try. I don't think you'll be disappointed.
Thank you for watching another episode of Wine This Week. I hope you enjoyed it. Join me next week as we move on to a amazing varietal, probably the most well-known out of Italy, Sangiovese. So until then, keep trying new wines and as always, cheers. <laughs>